Hi, this is Nick with Formi Solar, and today we're going to be breaking down the differences between the Tesla Powerwall 3 and the Enphase IQ10C. We're not just talking about specs from a website, we're talking about actual installation experience based on what we're doing in the field. We started in repair, so that means we've actually seen pretty much every possible failure point when it comes to these battery systems. Every installation shortcut and every instance in which one system outperformed the other. Today, we'll be giving you the insider knowledge, plus we're going to be answering a lot of questions that people have been asking. If you're a homeowner here in Southern California and you're looking into solar, click the link below to get a free quote. First, we're going to be getting into the core performance specs. The Tesla Powerwall 3 has 13.5 kilowatt hours of storage, whereas the Enphase IQ10C has 10 kilowatt hours. Now, for most families, this can make the difference between running the AC for just a little bit longer or even just being able to support the home for a little bit longer during a blackout. It really does depend on how you use your electricity, but if we were to compare this power pound for pound, the Tesla Powerwall 3 is coming out on top. Now, going into power output, the Tesla Powerwall 3 can currently output at 11.5 kilowatts continuous. What that really means in practical terms is you're able to power more loads at the same time and power larger loads. What that really means is for folks who are looking to back up loads like maybe an air conditioning system or possibly even a larger load than that, it's more practical to go with the Powerwall 3 because it's more able to handle that. For someone who's going with a more basic type of backup scenario, the 10C should work out just fine. So if you have one Tesla Powerwall 3, that usually will work out for a whole home backup for a large number of Southern California residents. But for right now, almost 90% of households could get by through the night on just a single Powerwall 3. So when it comes to the Enphase IQ10C, which has about seven kilowatts of continuous output, we view that as a more strategic choice when it comes to home backup. Because of the lower output capability, you're gonna to wanna to be a little bit more judicious when deciding what sorts of appliances you may wanna back up. For example, a lot of our homeowners will say, hey, let's leave the AC out of the mix and instead just go with the basics like the kitchen, the internet, and the lights uh, because I wanna make sure that what we do plug in is actually able to run. Let's jump into warranties. So first, when it comes to the Tesla Powerwall 3, we're looking at a 10-year warranty with unlimited cycles. On the other hand, with the Enphase IQ10C, you're looking at a 15-year warranty or 6,000 cycles, whichever happens sooner. Practically speaking, what does this really mean for our customers? Well, to be perfectly honest, warranty claims uh, so far for us have not really been a huge issue. We see maybe one warranty case per year out of all the homes that we install. So, so far the track record for warranties has been fantastic. That being said, we understand that 15 years is a meaningful difference between that and 10, uh, but in a practical user experience type of sense, it probably won't factor in as much. The bigger problems we always run into are really about poor system design or poor installation practice. This is really why you're going to want to choose an installer that has a lot of experience in this area and has been working with a lot of different systems over the years versus folks who are just getting into this technology now. Both these manufacturers now have meter collars available, which means for most installations, not only is it going to take less time, but it also reduces the cost of the installation by anywhere between $2,500 and $3,500 now. So fortunately, if you live in Southern California, all of the major utilities have now approved the usage of meter callers for both of these manufacturers, and so there should be no issues moving forward. After doing hundreds of these installations, these are the things that we've realized really add to the install time as well as the installation cost. So the first thing to consider is what the current state of the electrical infrastructure on site really is. For most homeowners, that means whether or not they need a panel upgrade. If your existing panel is either too old or not up to code, or just doesn't have enough capacity to support a battery system, a panel upgrade is gonna be required and that can cost anywhere between $3,500 to $5,500. The second point, which pretty much nobody ever talks about, is actually distance between the equipment. If you have a main service panel that's 100 feet away from where you can successfully locate a battery, that can not only significantly increase the cost due to the additional wire that's required, chances are you're gonna to have to upsize the wire as well, which adds cost and you're also going to have to upsize the conduit that you run it through which also adds cost. Now let's get into the actual size of these units and how they really look. 
The first difference that most folks will notice is the Tesla Powerwall 3 is roughly about eight inches deep. Now for the Enphase IQ10C, we're really looking at a little bit over 14 inches from the wall instead. Believe it or not, this is actually a pretty huge consideration for a lot of our homeowners because oftentimes that means the difference between whether or not it can be located in the garage or a lot of times the side of the house where the walkway is may be too narrow to accommodate something really thick because it can wind up blocking a door or something like that. So we've talked a lot about battery capacity, battery size and specification, but here's a little something that people hardly talk about that can greatly affect the cost of your system. And that's gonna be your choice of inverters. For example, a Tesla Powerwall 3 system has a built-in hybrid inverter that you can use as a string inverter. However, the Tesla Powerwall 3 can also integrate with a microinverter system. So if the homeowner prefers having microinverters, that will work, but it doesn't work the other way around, meaning an Enphase system or specifically an Enphase IQ10C battery will not interface with a string inverter system. Depending on your situation, whether you have shading or you just prefer microinverter technology, that's actually a fairly large cost consideration that most people don't think about. Now, one of the questions that everyone always asks about, does this battery work with a backup generator? The short answer is yes, both systems can work with a backup generator. However, the Tesla Powerwall 3 doesn't come purposely designed to support a backup generator, but you can add one through the use of an additional transfer switch. On the other hand, the Enphase system comes purpose-built for gas generators, meaning there's an actual port that you can connect a gas generator to without having to add additional equipment. The only thing is, you have to make sure that you mention this to your installer so they know to order the right parts so that it can couple that gas generator. It'll also probably add anywhere between $500 to $1,000 to the project cost as well. What you're probably wondering is, how much is all of this going to cost me? Well, to be perfectly honest, if we were talking about six months ago, the Tesla system was actually slightly cheaper to install than an Enphase system. However, with the advent of this new model and the new pricing available, both of these systems actually cost about the same to install now. Both of these systems have mobile apps that you can use to not only view your production and consumption data, but it also allows you to make small changes to your system as well. What we find is that both both apps are actually quite user-friendly and both provide a good deal of insight. The big difference in terms of customer satisfaction that we find though is really more about whether or not the homeowner is plugged into one ecosystem versus the other. For example, if you own a Tesla, you do get more data through the app because it interfaces not only with the home and the battery, but also the vehicle. On the Enphase side of things, you don't really have that level of detail. Even though they do have their own dedicated charger, it doesn't necessarily interact with the vehicle in the same way. And so those are probably the biggest differences. They're both great apps, they're both user-friendly, and it really depends on what you currently have at the home or what you intend to have at the home that will really make the most difference for you. Just one quick note about these systems, and specifically if you're living here in Southern California, you may be concerned with how these systems perform in the heat. We install a lot of batteries outdoors where it's south facing. So that means they receive a good amount of sunlight throughout the day. And to be perfectly honest, we've never had a system that uh, stopped performing just because it got too hot. Now, understand that the top rating on these battery systems is about 122 degrees Fahrenheit. While we know that the temperature rarely ever gets up that high here, sunlight on a piece of metal can get quite hot. And so if you're living in the high desert, it's something to consider and it will definitely affect where you install the battery system. Rather than tell you which system we prefer over the other, because quite frankly, they're very similar yet very different at the same time, I'd much rather tell you which system we would choose for what situation. If you own a Tesla or are perhaps thinking about getting a Tesla in the future, it makes sense for you to go with the Tesla Powerwall 3 because of how well it integrates and how much more information you're gonna be able to get from your system just because it's already integrated so well. Now, if you already have microinverters and you're looking to add a battery, it makes sense for you to stick with an Enphase system just due to the seamless interface that you're gonna have and you're gonna wind up having a better user experience overall. Also, if you happen to have a home that maybe has shading concerns and you need microinverters to help you mitigate some of that, it also makes sense to go with an Enphase system because not only do you take care of the shading issues, but again, you have that seamless integration that allows you to keep from jumping across multiple apps just to manage the same system. So at the end of it all, what we really want to say is both of these systems are actually fantastic from fantastic manufacturers. 
It really boils down to your individual needs and what your current situation is that really should determine which of these systems you go with. Choosing the right battery isn't just about the specs. It's really about your home, your energy goals, and what you hope to accomplish. At Formi Solar, we've installed hundreds of systems from both manufacturers across Southern California. Since we started in repair and we continue to do repairs every day, whether you live by the ocean or in the desert, we know exactly what it takes to keep your home running. Ready to find out which system is right for your home? Click the link below for a free quote. We'll analyze your specific situation, your roof, your energy usage, your backup needs, and give you an honest recommendation. Hey, so if you found this information helpful, please hit the like and subscribe button below because we're dropping more solar info every week. Sharing what we've learned from over a decade fixing and installing these systems. This is Nick from Formi Solar and we'll see you in the next one.